no rest for the guys who do barrel picks all the time, is it, Ryan? No, just keep grinding, man. You know, just keep waking up, keep doing these things. Yeah, number three for the week for us. So we're excited to uh, be keeping on, keeping on, bringing some great single barrels to our lovely folks on our Patreon community that help support everything that we do for the podcast. So thank you and shout out to everybody that does help support us. And we've got two other supporters here with us today. And this is one of the great, awesome, I guess, things that we get to do is you help support us and you get to help select a barrel. I mean, it's, a, it's a pretty rad thing, I think. Hopefully we can uh, keep that train going. You know, with the, the virtual selections, I think it's actually opened it up to a lot more people that could make it even though it's probably decreased the amount of people we could bring on it because usually when we go on a barrel pick, we have, you know, eight, six, eight, ten people there. But this also makes it easier for us at 9 p.m. on a, on a Thursday night too. Yep. I can wear my uh, workout pants. Oh, yeah? And, uh, you know, <laughs> just stumble in here and uh, start drinking whiskey. Pump some iron today? Yep. Get some push-ups in? And we're in the presence of a master distiller. Yes, is, yes. Uh, I can't wait awesome. to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's a that's a great little way. Let's let's kind of start doing our introduction. So uh, so Clayton, we'll start with you. Just kind of tell everybody, you know, who you are, where you're from, and everything like that. Yeah. So I um, I live we, I live up in the uh, eastern mountains in California, actually. So we're at uh, almost eight thousand feet in a little town called Mammoth Lakes. And so you know you you call me a master distiller, but I would certainly never apply that to myself. Uh, but we do, I do just do the head distill, distillation for our family distillery. So. Very cool. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. I think we're, that's pretty intriguing. Scott, uh, who do you distill for? Uh, nobody just for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I drink the it's libations. Okay. <laughs> same here. Same here. But yeah. Same question. Kind of talk about people, uh, who you are and where you're from. Yeah, so I'm up here in uh, Northeast Ohio. Um, you know, just kind of got into the bourbon scene about a year ago, um, actually. Um, it's kind of taken off from there, you know, just trying a lot of new things, talking to a lot of people, you know, like you guys and other friends that I know that have been into it for a while and just uh, trying to pick up things and learn it um, and really enjoy it, you know. That's what it's all about, you know, getting a bottle and, and enjoying it with, you know, uh, family and friends. So I'm, I'm really... Yeah. Really having a good time. Well, cool. Well, we're glad you're here. Glad both of you are here. So, uh, anybody yeah. that's joining us tonight, I didn't, I didn't do a very good job of like getting some graphics on the screen or anything. But we are picking a barrel from Sagamore, based out of Baltimore, Maryland, who we are now partnering with on our new Pursuit United Rye that we'll be talking. Maybe we'll probably drop a few hints every once in a while when we start talking about it. But uh, yeah, this will be. But I believe everything that we're tasting tonight, Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, this is probably going to all be MGP sourced, correct? Correct. But it is, uh, so they have two recipes that, you know, the 95.5, but they also have a 53% raw uh, that MGP made for them, but it's not the standard MGP raw recipe. So that's, MGP has made this for them for the past uh, however long, four to six years, I think. And then now they'll be coming out with their own uh gosh what in august september i think their own distillate will start to come out um so uh, excited for that too for sure i've had both offerings and they're both fantastic mgp so, blend and their blend it's a 50 50 blend of each is that what it is is that yeah. like what's in there is that's the, probably it's not on the barrel selection it's probably in like their standard offering or something like that correct yeah their standard offering then they have uh they have uh the double oaked and uh, they have the cash drink, and then yeah, you're just looking all at your stuff. ball of bottles all the stuff over they there. Sent me. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm doing. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, uh, I probably Clayton. This is probably an easy question. You've probably done at least some sort of barrel selection and tasted through barrels and everything like that before, right? So this is going to be a little bit old hat for you, right? Uh, you know, ju just our own juice. So it's, uh, it it's fun to uh, get out and do some other stuff here. And so that's, that's one of the things I really appreciate about uh, the opportunity to come do this with you guys. Kind of like an undercover boss situation for you. You get to kind of go and <laughs> peek around and see what everybody else is doing. He's going to show yep. the frauds yep. that we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Scott, is this your first barrel selection? Have you done one before? No, this is my first ever. So Great. I'm pretty excited. Awesome. Well, cool. Looking forward to it. 
And shout out to Blake and shout out to Ryan's hat right there, repping seal box. Yeah, just made like me your... smile. Oh, like, you know, you know, she knows how to warm a guy's heart, doesn't? You know, my wife says it looks like a toilet or something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that out. Yeah, he, now he's gonna go and he's gonna start thinking about that lot. Nice, like, is my logo? Is it look like a? I, I wouldn't say listen. it's a toilet. Don't listen. I mean, to I would say if 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 it is, it, uh, you ever traveled over to like London or like uh, one of those just, old ones, you know, like where the you, you get a chain the on the side. Yeah, you, you get a whole crapper because or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh there we go that's blake's like there we go swing and a miss there we go <laughs> yeah. sorry blake uh, uh i love the love hat it. though i wear it all the time yeah all right so so fellas uh i would usually say it, i see it in here all the time there's there's no right or wrong way to do this but as brian likes to say this is how i tell everybody to do it so what we'll do is uh I'm going to have, we have, I have three Glen Cairns in front of me. You all should have three different samples with barrel numbers across of them. Uh, I'm going to go in sequential order. So starting with barrel number 85 and then the 124 and then the 155. I typically like to nose through them first and then I'll start tasting only because if you just nose and taste, then it's just going to start affecting your nose as you start going through the rest of them. But Clayton can tell us that's not the right way. <laughs> 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 yeah. Clayton, what do you what do you what do you what do you usually do? That 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 that's exactly what I do. You know, it's uh it's important to get that kind of first pass on the nose without tasting them because it really does impact uh once you start tasting it, it really impacts what you start smelling. Absolutely. <clears throat> so now, Scott, with you, you said you just got into bourbon about a year ago. What got you into it a year ago? Uh just you know, some of my friends, uh some of the guys at work, you know, they've been into it and just hearing some of the stories behind the distilleries and just so many options out there, you know, what do you like? You know, I found out that I like, you know, the higher proof stuff for myself. I like that a little bit of ethanol, uh, you know, on the palate right away. So it's just, it's opened up, you know, a lot of friendships with some other people that I didn't even know were into it. So, you know, been you know, doing some trading and stuff with guys and just helping them find stuff that are out of state that I can get here in Ohio for them easily. What, like Weller 107? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Isn't it funny? Like, like that's what people crave and go after. And Ohio, like, it used, it's, a lot of people consider it like, oh, it's a wasteland of bourbon. You can't get anything. But people are always like, oh, yeah, there's like Weller on the shelf every single day. Here in Kentucky, like, it's, it's a needle in a haystack. No yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. Yeah, I was just at a store today and they had a couple 107s. And then, you know, the Weller Special Reserve, they had like eight or ten. I was like, Dang, Scott, people were just come, friends? Well, coming in and you, snagging them. Yeah, let me know. For some 107s. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan's, Ryan's all about trading some pursuit series for 107 nowadays. That's right. <laughs> we're one got, a bottle, got a bottle down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> right on, mm. right on. Well, so like I just picked up barrel 85, so I'm going to start kind of uh, nosing it and going through it. But I will say on, on first glance, the color on these are fantastic. Um, so these are six I, years. Yeah. Almost, well, about, they'll be six. I was about to say, did they, the did they put no, the barrel? They're already six. Did they put the barrel fill date on there yeah, for you all? 7, 11, 14. So yeah, they'd be yeah. six and a half. Maybe. Well, it'll be seven here in two months, right? Correct. So we should probably tell them to just hold Carry off and make it a seven year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys will find out we are not that good at math. Like at all. But yeah, I mean, I, I'd say whatever we select tonight, we'll tell them to hold off on bottling for two months and say, well, let's, uh, let's make it a seven year. Why not? Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, think anybody's going to sent us uh, the same recipe or different ones. It's a good question. Don't know. But already in the nose, first off, I'm already digging it. Yeah. It's funny. The noses on one and two are like vastly different. I, only, I was only on one so far. Oh, like Shem's right here. He's like, it'll be a seven year old. There you go. Shem's got us. Barrel coordinator. Papa Papa Shem takes care of us. Oh yeah, you're right. One and two is a little bit different. Um, not to say to put any kind of emphasis on anything. I do prefer one over two on the nose, but you're not supposed to do that. I know. I'll save. I'll save my reservations a little bit later. There you go. Uncle Shem. Uncle Shem. Oh, Uncle Shem. So Clayton, where'd you, uh, how'd you learn to distill? Um, you know, we, uh, <laughs> a 
we had a little uh, little operation in the garage for a few years, and then uh, it kind of uh, became a retirement project for my father. Um, and so when we uh, craft distilling legislation didn't really open up in California till uh, January first, two thousand sixteen. So um, before that, you couldn't operate any sort of tasting room. Everything had to go through distribution. Um, so it didn't really didn't scale. And uh, so we really uh, we really dove into it then and and uh, jumped in with Moonshine U. And uh, you know I've just been hammering away on uh, like you guys' podcasts, honestly. Every time you guys bring uh, distillers on, there's there's always really good stuff in there that uh, I always pick up. So it's an incredible resource you guys have created here. Yeah. Who knows that? what who knows we would have actually created something that people listen to for <laughs> like educational purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was Ryan wasn't it something that we went to BBC one day at Bartstown Bourbon Company and they're like, oh yeah, they make us listen to your podcast for like training. <laughs> like, yeah. like what <laughs> was there? Yeah, the like in the tour, you know, tour and tasting room, like that, all the team members there were like, yeah, we, they, they make us listen to all your podcasts to learn about, you know, cause they offer at, at their bars, you know, all kinds of different offerings, brands and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that was, I was like, well, there you go. Didn't expect I wonder, that. <laughs> I wonder if somebody makes like a, like a highlight training reel of like all of our podcasts and like stitches them all together, like a, for like a solid hour <laughs> of like, like, this is what you need to know. Here's, here's six years worth of content crammed into one hour. Best of. <laughs> all right. I've nosed through them. Uh, I'll, I'll keep my reservations, but two of them, two of them I, I really like. Yep. <clears throat> It's odd that the proof on all these say 110. Does anybody else find that odd? Maybe it's mm -hmm. just me. Uh, Fritz is asking, are these Sagamores own distillate? No, not yet. These are all going to be seven-year MGP, but these are MGP that have been distilled uh, to Sagamore's uh, recipe. I guess, yeah, specs. Yeah. Sagamore were releasing their own distillate in later this year, so August, September. October, November time frame, whenever that is. And so will we. Yes. Yes. Looking forward to it. So Clayton, you said well, before we started on here, you were, you're kind of, you were in my field. You were <clears> kind of doing, doing tech administration sort of stuff like that. And then you made a hard leap going all the way over into moonshine you so so you've actually been in our backyard before so coming down here to louisville to to do that sort of training as well yep yep i got uh you know it was a a pretty pretty uh subtle career transition there but um you know it's uh would like to get down there more have have two young uh girls so it's uh you know travel can be tough especially these days but uh one day one day we'll be getting back down there and getting out and Doing some more tour and stuff. Yeah. We need to do moonshine. You you want to go to moonshine? You run? Can you fund that? We can <laughs> we can try. We'll let's get a, let's get a few more dollars rolling in for from United, and then we'll we'll send you there for mm. a blending uh, blending course. I'm just gonna just keep doing my spreadsheet stuff. Hmm. They're really good. Ooh, that that taste on two is really different. Yeah, I know. So these are marked one ten. Do we know what the proof is on them? They're marked one ten. We just got to take it at face value. I'm sure. Do you so, have like a crazy hydrometer with you? You could go ahead and just like proof them for us real quick. But yeah, I was <laughs> like, I don't either. But <laughs> I need to grab their cash drink. See what it's at. Hold on, I'll grab that. I mean, I've I've tasted one and two so far. Uh, surprisingly enough, like it's not like a a big punchy rye, like overly. It, none of it has that 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 dill or that. Um, so the you know, cash drink high spice high spice. I mean, it's it's pretty pretty mild. Oh, yeah. So maybe one tens. Sorry, say that again, Ryan. I was talking when you were. Oh, I should have listened. I talked without putting my headphones in. Um, <laughs> This 
batch that I have ca of cash ring does is 112 proof. So maybe they are 110. Which, you know, what we know about already is you, you get a, you get a, like a one point proof difference of when anything like that. Yeah. 112.2. I'm, I'm glad Shem's here. He's answering all the questions. And guess so it will be bottled at 110. That is the proof they make each of the blends. There you go. That's why Shim's the best in the biz. Yes, he is. We don't yeah, need to too, make... uh, the flavors. So much vibrant, like, fruit. You know, I wasn't expecting that after the nose. And that's what I had. A, I had a few, uh, a few before this, before we started. So, you know, I, I am, I'm, I'm finding these like super spice or anything like that. They're, they're pretty mellow. They almost drink more like a bourbon than they do a rye for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're a lot more fruitier than spicy per se. Mm -hmm. I haven't had three yet, so maybe it's spicy. But nope. First two are very no nice, bright, crisp fruits. Mm -hmm. Now there's the spice. What was it on three or something? Mm -hmm. I'll have to uh, go back and try it again. Uh, did Jake send you guys barrel numbers for one, two, and three? We have, yes, we have the barrel numbers with us, Shem. So we, we do have that. We're starting off. We got barrel 85, barrel 124, and barrel 155 going in that order. So, Scott, do y'all drink much rye whiskey over there? Um, not as of late, no. Um, just started getting into it. You know, some mictors. Um, and that, which was my first bottle, uh, that I tried, my wife bought it for a friend and she didn't want it. So she's like, it's yours. So I decided to pop it open and it was really smooth. I was, I was impressed with it. Um, I've had a new riff, um, rye and that was really good when I had it at the distillery. But when I got home, I don't know, just, it was a different bottle or a different barrel, but it tasted a little different. It's when um, you cross that state wrong. line and you go to Ohio. It's just. Is that I mean, what it is? Yeah. I mean, um, it's, it's the water, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, we don't like our Buckeyes down here. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> uh, here we go. I'm just messing. <laughs> that's, that's interesting you say that. I was like, I've, I've had a few of their rides. They're really good. And I'm sure. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know if the cat's out of the bag yet, but it it's it's going to be real soon. They, they've already sent a, a release notice to their. Uh, people that have purchased barrels and that are in some of their clubs. And so New Riff is coming out with their newest line extension here in the next uh, few weeks. And it is a six-year, age-dated six-year uh, malted rye. So they said it's kind of like very new. Well, I mean, it's it's not new, but it's different in the industry because finding malted rye apparently isn't a uh, very common thing. Mm -hmm. Clayton could probably answer that. I don't really know. He's a distiller, not me. But uh, finding malted rye apparently isn't a uh, very common. Uh, but they've been putting down lots of barrels for for a few years. And so, as far as I remember, when we were just doing our newer pick two weeks ago, I vaguely remember her saying that that's going to be a permanent line extension. So we'll don't so everybody that's think, hearing this now, like don't go crazy and think you got to go and pay crazy amounts for it because it it's supposed to be a permanent extension. Yeah, we actually use a lot of malted rye. I think all the all the rye in our bourbon is malted. Um, we we're we're super lucky. We've got a uh, a, a great craft uh, floor malting operation out in um, Alameda called um, Admiral Maltings, and so they uh, they're they're sourcing all California uh, rye and malting it there. So it's we're we're lucky like that, I guess. <laughs> there you go. So Clayton's keeping us honest. He's like, no, malted rye everywhere. Like, don't don't let him fool you with the marketing. <laughs> I, I, I I didn't say I didn't say it's everywhere. Um, but everywhere in California. It's every, just everywhere in California, apparently. In, in our distillery, anyways. No, that's all good. Do you like distilling rye? I've heard it's sticky. Uh, you know, it's it's not too bad. We're actually. Um, we do about three months of the year. We do rye production, so we're we're actually in the middle of that right now, um, running uh, some hundred percent rye for the next few weeks, and it's 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 not too bad to work with. It's definitely thick and and soupy, but um, 
you know, it is what it is. We're, we're set, we're set up for that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. I remember, gosh, I think it was, well, it was another new riff barrel pick years ago. And we, we went there and we toured the facility and they were doing rye that day. And the rye was actually like bubbling over the fermentation tanks and they just had somebody there sitting there with a hose, just, just trying to get it down the drain because it, they couldn't stop it from going. I mean, it was doing that for hours. Yeah. You get that, the high protein content in the rye really, uh, really creates all those bubbles and keep big head, bubbly head on it. Yeah. Uh, Clayton, where are you, where's, where's your distillery at again? Exactly. Mammoth Lakes, California. Okay. There you go. So Mammoth Lakes, California. So Shem was wondering and uh, anybody else that's looking for Devil's Creek. Want to go take a figure out what they're up about. There you go. Now, you know, B bourbon and rye. That's what we do. When yeah. you say Eastern mountains, how like in relation to like Tahoe where how far North South is, I would assume North, I guess, or I'm trying to think on a map. Yeah, so we're um, we're we're like two and a half hours south of Tahoe. Um, oh, okay. So we're we're actually we're actually more out in the Frey Ranch neck of the woods. Um, we're just a couple hours south of them. Right on. I love Tahoe. It's like my favorite place in the U.S. It's pretty. It it, it it's beautiful out here, but it's uh it, it can be a challenging climate, and uh, it can be like where we are. It's really really remote, so. Yeah, it's it's so expansive when you go out west. It's like you just look and you can see for miles like versus here. Visibility is like four or five miles. There it's like <laughs> holy shit. It, you know. It, well and, and back east you drive like five hours and you're across three states and you know, right. you're you're out you're out here and it's like, oh, we're like five hours from LA. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's massive. These are all really two. These are three really good samples. Like I think we have like a very mixed bag of of things you could choose from here. It's like got one that's a little more typical, one's more off, a little, and one that's like way more spice. So, mm -hmm. yeah, three. Three's like a. It's got that spice, but it's also got some like a little kind of brown sugar thing going like that you don't typically get with a rye like um like brown sugar <clears> buttery <throat> kind of thing yeah well me i was uh i had dinner earlier and then had my uh my little squares of chocolate for dessert and put one in my mouth and then i bit the corner of my lip down here and so every time i take a sip of whiskey i just get this Burn. stinging sensation down here oh yeah Nothing like drinking whiskey with an open wound. Yeah, canker sore. It's not a canker sore. No, don't you don't you <laughs> don't you say that. You're like Kenny had a herpes and he was sitting there drinking whiskey then. Yeah, don't say that. We don't need that. Yeah, these are all good. These would be good campfire. Let's see. Someone on Instagram asked, do they offer barrel proof of their double oaked? I have no idea. I'm not sure, but that double oaked is really good. Hey, I like I like Ryan's here. They had four samples, and they just chose two because it was too hard. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely one that's a bourbon drinker's rye, and then one's a more typical rye, and then yep. and one in between. I wouldn't say I, I don't know. I, typical is a hard word here. Like when we think of typical, I mean it's because MGP has dominated this space for so long, and all you think of is ninety five MGP, and so you've got those, yeah, you know, a little bit of mint, a little bit of. There's no spearmint, like pickle, dill pickle one. No, here. there's none of that in any of these. No, I mean, like, like number three is a typical rye to me like just bold spicy mm -hmm. so that's me it's really kind of hard to figure out which way we're gonna lean here on some of these 
like a lot of all spies, nutmeg, mm-hmm. kind of begging spices. Whereas the other two are kind of a little more citrusy, bright fruits, little honey. Like I don't know. I guess it's you know, I guess it's a good question. If even ask Shem, like God, could we take two of these? Because <clears throat> I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed to taking two of these. Ryan. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I like, I like all three of them. But I'm, I'm not <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. I was like, well, I'm not going to take all three. I'm not going to be a cop out. Be like, that's the worst barrel pick ever. You didn't really pick anything. Um, but I, I honestly, I think it's going to be hard to choose between some of these. Well, uh, yeah, let's do. We should, we should do. We should come away with a top one and a second one, and then uh, we'll we'll try to shoot for two when we send the emails tomorrow there you go shem's yeah and like shem's, shem's on top of it kind of like three to six seven years old it's like it's sweet spot and then it like i don't know then it's not any good until it gets to like 17 20 years old <laughs> i don't know i mean because i've this... had some like eight to ten year old mgps and they're like they're okay but they're not I don't know. It just seems like they need to be younger or really old. Well, I think the I think the younger actually brings out a lot more like vibrance in regards of like taste profile and everything like that. And then after you get through there, I think you start getting to what we're getting at is this as Paul mentioned, eighty seven year olds. Yes, we're we're drinking what will be <clears> seven. <throat> they're they're about six months or sorry, uh, about three months shy of, of being seven year right now. But many of these are are losing some of that like vibrant like character that you would get out of like a peerless or or something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. But they but they have their. I really enjoy them, uh, and these are not a typical ninety five five MGP. None of these are. Yeah, I would think they're probably the other recipe, but I'm probably way wrong. The. <laughs> Uh, I, I think Shem said they're the, the samples are a blend of the two recipes. They might be. I mean, I have here thing thing is I have no idea. The samples come and we do this and we just BS and just try to taste good whiskey. But uh, I don't. I wish I knew. All I know is what's on the label here, which is giving us the okay. The yeah, he said this is yeah. MGP and is a blend of the two recipes. Okay, so it is a blend so of the two. Technically, getting okay. Two half barrels blended in okay. one barrel. <laughs> Why not? Right. Okay. Fifty-two percent rod. I said fifty-three, but fifty-two. Mm-hmm. I should know that because I've been blending with it. But <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Get two. I'll buy one out. Right. There you go. You, you got it. Matt Leon says they blend this to make Maryland style rye. I don't really know what Maryland style rye truly means. Maybe maybe when we go up there, we're actually heading up to Sagamore uh, to visit. Uh, you know, to go up to Maryland to visit Sagamore here in July, and we'll uh, we're bringing our, our equipment, so we'll sit down and have a, have a little podcast sesh with with Brian over there at Sagamore, and then I think we'll, Maryland we'll, style is the way I explained to me was. It's more closer to bourbon than it's kind of like Kentucky rye. Yeah. It's not, um, kind of like what like, Scott alluded to with like the Michter's rye and stuff like that earlier. Yeah, like yeah. it's not, it's not crazy. Um, it's, it's not like Indiana's 95 five, which mm-hmm. everybody has just grown to assume that's the way rye is supposed to taste. Yeah. But I think Pikesville yeah, it's like a what a fifty one or fifty two percent. It's a Maryland style rye. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure. I mean, it probably actually can't be that hard to look up here. Heaven Hill <laughs> rye mash bill. I think it's like fifty one or fifty two percent. The Let's house. see the recipe. Modern thirst. He's always Bill's always got something good over here. So. Oh, they got the best. Like spreadsheet of all the yeah, it is. It's just an rules. online spreadsheet, online spreadsheet of everything. Uh, Remember, we'll I did a presentation once, and I had that, and everybody's like, "Gosh, how do you know all these mash bills?" I was like, 
I got a spreadsheet right here. <laughs> you're you're right. It's it's a it's fifty one percent rye, thirty five percent corn, fourteen percent malted barley. So yep, there you go. Barely legal rye. They uh, I need to give you some, Kenny. They sent me a tequila finish rye. They're blending in a tequila barrel. Just in time for Cinco de Mayo? And it's actually, I hate tequila, and it's pretty <laughs> damn good. All right. Well, I mean, I'll try it. I'll, I'll bring I'll try anything. We'll make those and we'll make tequila finished rye margaritas. <laughs> <laughs> we got to come up with a new name from, it just can't be margaritas. We'll have to figure out a new name. I mean, bourbon readers are probably already a thing, but we'll, we'll have to think of something. Rye readers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Agave and rye. They already got that. Mm -hmm. So what do you think, Scott? And you got to got to lean in towards uh, at least two of them right now? Thinking um, that you could easily eliminate one of them? Yeah, I, th I like one and two so far. Um, three's kind of like that typical. kind. I mean, I like the, the brown sugar um, kind of taste to it. Um, but one's got a really nice... You know, that first sip on the palate was really, really enjoyable, you know. Um, and then two kind of, you know, mellowed down a little bit. You could tell it was definitely different than one. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm leaning towards one and two right now. Yeah. Scott, you're speaking Tot my language. Totes my goats right there. But I got to pour some more. Well, hopefully everybody got close to two ounces or one and a half ounces out of it because mm -hmm. they, they sent us 200 ml or i sent it was a 200 ml for split between all of us so and shout out to the keg and bottle team who who makes this all possible and yeah uh tony. did all the splitting of the samples and sent it to all of us so thank you to tony and mara and the entire keg and bottle team for being a great partner to us and getting all these barrel picks so thank you so much and shim. And, and shim. And shim. But keg the letter in bottle.com. Just go and check it out. Pretty sure he's got a Mictor's 20 on the site, but probably don't want to pay for it. What's, what's the price? I don't know. It's, it's, it, 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 I, I love having these conversations with Tony um, because Tony is, he's, he's real with you. I mean, he, he is a, um, you know, when he, he's, he looks at it as, as you know, it's supply and demand and, and he's like, Hey, I've, I've got a, I've got millions of dollars in inventory between all of my stores. And if I want to sell a bottle for a little bit extra, I'm going to do it. And, you know, they also have the luxury out there in California that they could buy off of, uh, uh, you know, another individual and resell in stores and stuff like that too. So not everything is all from a distributor either. It's not all wholesale, but he, he likes to make sure he has inventory to take care of, you know, it's California, right? So making sure you have inventory to take care of customers that, that have money and just want to spend it. And mm -hmm. it's, it's funny when we talk about this and, you know, a lot of us we're, we're, we're regular common folk and we'd be like, I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a bottle of bourbon, but you've got the other half of the world that are coming from scotch and a thousand dollars on a bottle is they're like, what? that's cheap. What are you talking about? So it's a, it's a completely different mindset when you're coming from that, that, yeah, that way we're peasants. So we're like, <clears throat> we're like, we can't afford that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, for the longest time, bourbon's just been the, like, you know, the common man's drink and it's, it's, struggle but now we're kind of moving into the golden era of it and everything like that so yeah it's definitely happening in ohio there's a lot of secondary out here in ohio well we are uh we're well i should say at least for the pursuit spirit side of things so i've applied to actually get united into ohio um but we won't be up for it's like I think it's like you have to like give a presentation to like the Ohio Liquor Control Board and like justify why you want to be in Ohio. And we wouldn't be up until October, but I'm getting all the paperwork in now. 
and will be set up for 2022. So we'll see what happens there. That's awesome. Can't wait. It's going to be like Texas where it's like you apply and eight months later, you're like, so where are we at? And they're like, well, we're just reviewing applications from eight months ago. (laughs) (laughs) Which uh, it actually was in the span of two and a half days. We got our liquor license for Illinois. So we are going to be in Illinois here and we're already into Colorado. So we're registered there. So. Colorado and Illinois are the next ones on the list of Get Pursuit United on the shelves. So nice. now I can just find my trip. I can ride off my trips to Denver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, though. Illinois is just as bad as Kentucky when it comes to taxes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was I was looking at our, our cost of what it has to be for wholesale, and I was like, oh, that, that stings a little bit, but whatever. Yep. No, so we need to go to Chicago, I guess. All right. <laughs> Add it to the list. Our our summers are <clears throat> filling up with our calendar, so who knows what Yeah, we'll mine's do. already booked. What about you guys? Any uh, any summer plans or is it just straight work or <laughs> still <laughs> trying to make... still trying to figure out this whole pandemic thing or is it coming to an end around you? Yeah. But making whiskey all summer. Nice. I mean, I could think of worse things. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's worse things to do. So, mm-hmm. how how big's the operation? Are you are you putting down like a few barrels a day, or is it you know like what what's we, it look like? Um, we are we're we would definitely be on the micro side. We're about four thousand proof gallons a year. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we're like eight seventy five eighty ish barrels. So, yeah, <clears throat> yep. being very well, selective with what you do with it. Then, yeah. Well, so I mean that that's that's a that's a really cool thing is we get to uh, do kind of w- whatever we want to, right? And uh, you know that's it's it's good and bad. You try not to get too far into the weeds. Obviously, you got to run a business and you got to be like aware of kind of like mainstream pallets and know where where you're selling into and stuff. And um, but still still have fun with it, make good product too. So yeah. For sure. What about you, Scott? Any any uh, summer plans coming up? Yeah, actually heading back down to Kentucky the end of June again for our fourth trip on the Bourbon Trail. Oh, nice! nice. You uh, got some got some places staked out where you're going to go. Yeah, there's a couple of distilleries we couldn't, you know, uh, visit last year. The times that we were there, just either the days we were there, or think you know the hours and stuff. So Woodford Reserve. Wild Turkey, um, Castle and Key, we heard about. So we're going to check them out. Yeah, um, Buffalo Trace, to. of course, just to check it out. Um, and then we didn't make it over to the uh, Barton Distillery the last time. We were at Heaven Hill, but didn't make it to Barton. And uh, a buddy of mine told me about Preservation Distillery. It was pretty cool. Um, so we're going to be there for three days. And then we're taking another trip in July to Delaware. My wife's like, hey, let's go to Delaware. I'm like, all right. Four hours later, we booked a trip. Delaware is cool. That's I've quick. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> Fenwick Island. So we've none of neither of us have been there before, and she just heard about it from a, a friend at work, and we booked it that night. So it was kind of like crazy. As long as I got my, you know a dog sitter, so hopefully my daughter says yes. <laughs> the, whenever just I think bring of a Delaware, Guinea watch your dog you come in. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, so let me see if I can, uh, if I can share a tab here. Uh, let's see. Chrome tab this. This is, this is all I ever think about when I hear about Delaware. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Classic. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully people are, uh, get that reference if it, for Wayne's world, but yeah. Was the dumber? No, never mind. Dumb and dumber was Rhode Island. <laughs> That's where they were from. But Scott, I mean, you're, you're totally right. You know, I think uh, one of the most underrated distilleries that you do ever see or that people don't think about as bourbon geeks is actually Woodford reserve because oh, when beautiful. you go, it is, it is picturesque Kentucky. 
It is rolling fields of horse farms. I mean, you just look at it and you're, you're, you're taking an all. I mean, I think it's, it's fantastic uh, when you get to go and you get to see it and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's then, what I heard. Yeah. You know, guy and, I ran into at the, at the actual liquor store last week told me, he's like, Oh, Woodford Reserve. He's like, you know, I've been down there. He did some like equestrian trail or something. He's like, when you come up on it, he's like, it's just, it's not what you expect. It's just like you said, picturesque. It's just beautiful. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that Kentucky. one. It truly is. But, and then even better is that, uh, Castle and Key is just, well, it's, yeah. it's right down you the got, road, like 10 minutes down the road. Millville. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you get, you get a look past, uh, uh, what would you call that, Brian? I don't want to. I don't want to be insensitive to it, but <laughs> Millville. Yeah, I mean, you just you just kind of kind of look past. Uh, I mean, it's just it's, it's Millville, Kentucky. Like I don't know how to call it without without being insensitive, but um, it's a uh, it's a sight to be seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't wait then. <laughs> You'll just look at it and be like, okay, well, I'm glad we're at the castle finally. So. <laughs> I think that's the best way to put it. It's not like it's a it's not like bad. You don't have to worry about like safety or anything like that. You'd just be like is, are you are you sure we're in the right place? Like that's <laughs> I that's what you're when uh, they were redoing it all, Castle and Key and Chris Morris, we were talking to him and he's like he's like how are they gonna get people through Millville <laughs> <laughs> to, to Castle and Key? Oh, wow. <laughs> But once you get there, there I fun. promise it's yeah. worth it. Oh, it's Castle and Key is probably one of the most unique, cool because it's they've done an excellent job of making it new, but it's living history old and like there's so much history and like the architecture and everything is just the gardens are it's 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 a great you could spend a whole day there, really. Yeah, I mean, Colonel E. H. Taylor's name's like on the wall of the castle. Like it's yeah. it's it's impressive. It's really cool to see. Yeah, we yeah, my wife had mentioned it, and then we saw it pop up. We watched that uh neat the story of bourbon mm-hmm. documentary, mm-hmm. and you know, they did a whole thing mm-hmm. on it, and I was like blown away just you know what they're doing and how beautiful it, it really is. So definitely looking forward to that. You know, we're getting ready to record new stuff like Maybe we should reach out to Brett Connors of Castle and Key and see if we should get an update. We haven't we haven't we haven't done anything with Castle and Key in a while, so maybe it's not maybe it's worth exploring. An update. Yeah, I know. Way it's, back it's, in, and and Brett is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to. He's the one that gave us the tours when we went around Castle and Key, and I, I thought he probably knew more than Marianne at the time. I mean he he's uh he's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I've enjoyed the. I went did a barrel pick for Pinhook there with Breaking Bourbon, and um, yeah, I was blown away by everything there. I mean, just it's everything you could ever want on tour. It's like history, great scenery, great products, check. great everything. Check, yeah, checks, check, checks, checks. Check. <laughs> All right, but we are we're coming up on a little bit of extra time here. Um, I want to kind of start narrowing down something or figuring out like one to eliminate or, or, you know, figuring out a way to lead with, with one of them here. So I kind of want to, I guess, pick out your top two and because that's going to help us at least eliminate one of them. And then maybe we'll just go from there, try to eliminate another one. And then we'll, we'll shoot for one and two, um, or to get one and two barrels. Should I say not number one and number two, but what do y'all think? Does that sound, sound reasonable? Sounds, Sounds reasonable. good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you need you another know, minute or you've kind of like got it in your head of, uh, you know, at least two or at least one that you want to eliminate? Hmm. I know, I, I'm going to go back to a few of these real quick and just <laughs> retry one more time. Every time I say I want to eliminate one, then I taste them like, ah, I can't eliminate that one. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, man, there's something good about it. Yeah. All right. I've got mine. All right. Y'all think? What do y'all think? Yeah? Yeah, your nay? <laughs> All right. So let's uh so let's do this. So if uh, if number one is in your top two, go ahead and just uh go raise a hand right here. Just me, little old me. Oh, okay, okay. Not just little <clears> me. <throat> three people is number one. 
All right, number two, if it's in your top two. No, we've got three again. This is not very good. <laughs> so number three. <laughs> number three, if it's in your top two. One. Oh, me and Clayton, the distiller. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. All right. See what we're doing. So uh, if if we if we look at it that way, then number one and number two are, are moving on to the next round. I I you know I it's funny. I really like three as well. I I love the spice in his character. I think it is. I mean, it's it's just a it's an all around great whiskey. There's just something about number one that I will say. I think it lacks a finish versus number three, but the taste is. In my opinion, I mean, it's just, it's very well rounded. It's just, I don't know. I like it, but I feel like two is an elevated one. And then like two and one are kind of similar, but two is more elevated. And then three is just totally different in like I, nice, I can, vibrant spice. I mean, I can be, I can be persuaded here. Uh, maybe Scott can too. Um, no, maybe, no, maybe, maybe don't. throw a vote here. No, no, because no, I guess I think, I think it's, it's good to have this discussion. Um, so go ahead and go ahead and lay your cards out and let's see if, see if you can't <laughs> sway somebody here. Yeah. Clayton, what are you thinking? Why do you like uh, three? Uh, you know, you know, like for me, I, you know, I know, and it's probably because it's like the most, the most like stereotypical, like up the middle rye. Um, but it's it, it's it's just really well balanced, I think, like from start to finish. Um, whereas one and two, there's there's things I like about both of those a lot, but there's also uh, kind of holes in them a little bit. Like uh, you know, I, I really really like the nose on two, but I just felt like it's just a little bit soft for you know maybe what I what I would like in a rye, and then. Um, the the nose on one is really really similar to two, but um, it, it's just like when like I I really liked one one and three right and those seem to be like the most different to me, and then two two kind of landed in the middle a little bit but you know just didn't didn't finish very hard for me and yeah okay so I will um I'll, I'll chime in here a little bit too because I I tend to agree with a lot of what both you were saying. I feel like like one and two are, are sort of similar. I think the nose on one is better than the nose on two, but I oh, think yeah. the I think the taste on two is crazy different. Like I, I think that's yeah. it's way it it's just a. I don't think I've ever had a fruit fruit flavor fruit flavor profile on a rye like that before. Hmm. On number two, that's what I'm like. For me, that would be like my number one favorite that I'd go with because it is like completely different. Now, I do see that if we want to create something that is, uh, if we, we want to give people like variability and we say like this, if you want to have something that's like a, a spiciness versus a fruitiness, then two and three are probably the ones to go with. Um, because one, one just hit check boxes because it definitely just had, I mean, it had good flavor, but it did lack a finish. And I think that's the thing that was probably a turnoff for me, but it's also part of like, one of the things that I, I like about something that's just like easy sipping and maybe that's just like my mood tonight, but I can, I can be swayed. I can, I can move to two and three as long as two is in the running here. <laughs> <laughs> I like, uh, yeah, I like two and three. But... That's Scott, where, where are you, uh, where, what are you feeling right that's now? That's all I'm selling. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but I like one too. I've, I've, one, I, I'm out of one because I kept drinking it. So, but I kept, <laughs> but I kept drinking it. Trying I was to like, find, you swing over here. About like that's all I got left of <laughs> that one. But I kept drinking it, trying to find something more about it. But it's all we're all different. So, well, I I think that one does lack a finish, um, but the flavor is really good on it. It just yeah. it just doesn't have that something that's over the over the top. But versus I get two, what Clayton say is two is it is very mellow, very easy. It's light, delicate, kind of fruity. And three is just perfectly balanced. It's like a great solid rye. Mm -hmm. I I would I would gladly give up one for two to keep three in the running. Yeah, I like three. Yeah, 
because <laughs> three is like a really good solid rye, and mm -hmm. then two's different. Yes, it's a little light, delicate, but there's some great fruity notes that I just can't get past. I don't know. I really like it. There's some honey and bright citrus. Right. But porch sipping rye. What about you, Scott? Would you be mad if we if we did a, a two and three? Like, is that a no? We, I don't think so. One. Yeah, you know, I like one. I agree with you. It was good. You know, it did lack that kind of finish on it. Um, but like you know, I said earlier, the start. You know, the first couple of sips I took. You know, was really nice, refreshing. Um, but I could I could change my mind. You know, I just I poured the last of three, and it's. It's growing on me a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I think we could we could probably eliminate three, you know. Seems like everybody's in agreement. You know, that finish. Eliminate one. Eliminate one, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think the finish, yeah, on one is, uh, you know, like a lot of people are saying, you know, it's just not there, you know. Okay. Two's got that, that fruity kind of to it, and three's got that buttery, smooth brown sugar to it. Um, I think Ryan said earlier, um, that's kind of sticking with me the more I drink it. I agree yeah. as well. It's like buttery brown sugar, but then you get yeah. that great spice on the end that you're used to with the rye. Right, right. Well, uh, like I am in balanced. I'm in the camp that we don't even try to choose a favorite out of these two because I have a feeling we'll be able to get both of them. So we should probably just go ahead and you know not try to tell people like, oh, if you only get one, like which one are you going to get? Like, I think you have to make a choice. Like, do you get something that's spicy? Or do you get something that's fruity? And I right. think that's that's just the uh, the balance that you have to find there. Love it. So we all in agreement. Team Huddle, can we put our hands in? Like, all right, go, go team, <laughs> go team. <laughs> <laughs> We've never done that before. That never would have. That's never worked out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, like I said, this is great. Um, there we go. So easy enough. So Tony was offered four barrels. These are three of them. We can have 124 and 155. Nice. So check socks. We did it. Two Done. barrels. Done. See, y'all thought you were going on one barrel pick tonight. No, you went on two barrel picks tonight. Excellent. But no, this was this was great. It was uh I'm actually I'm actually mad at myself we didn't do this earlier ryan Sooner, yeah yeah we we, we i know we, we, we get too hung up on mgp and oh i but i mean it's that's but, that, uh, it, with them they were you know doing it to spec versus just you know sourcing 95 five yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's it's definitely a, a big and by the way for anybody that's that's watching that's sleeping on you know sagamore picks i mean i think this is this is a great example of what you can do if you do have somebody that is contract distilling to your specs and doing something that's different and they they are blending for it. I mean, it's it's not a typical 95.5 barrel proof rye whiskey that you're going to be like, oh, yeah, it's got the, the hints of everything else that we've seen in the market. So, yeah, I'm kind of mad that we slept on this for so long, but I'm glad we finally did it, though. Yeah, and I'm super pumped, you know, to be working with them moving forward, you know, we're doing the United Rye with them. The this MGP stuff's great. Their distillate's really good. I mean, it's crazy good. So so many good things coming out of Sagamore. They got a great team there. Brian Tracy, you know, is doing a great job. You know, it's just I'm I'm really excited to work with them. They're a great group of folks and they got they're doing some good things. Yeah. No, totally. Uh, and there's somebody asked what the age on these. These will be seven years old once they are bottled. So, in regards of like what you get in the market, even at what we're looking at, I mean, I think seven is a, a pretty good age for for what you could expect in a, a barrel selection or, across the portfolio of a lot of different whiskeys out there that aren't coming from major distilleries. So, I think, I mean, I'm I'm super happy with it. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Excited so to go we'll, to Baltimore now. Yeah, let's go. Let's get some crab cakes. <laughs> go see where the wire was shot. 
And that too. If you want, if we will, I'll go ahead and look on TripAdvisor and figure out if we can find ourselves a little walking tour, and we'll go ahead and do that. I love that show. Okay. I know, I know, that's so great. But I do want to say thank you to everybody that tuned in tonight. I think at, at the high point we had around like 55, 60 people tuned in for us. So thank you so much for everybody that did tune in. And if you are interested of where you can actually get bottles like these across the the 40 to 50 barrels that we're actually going to select this year. You can go to bourbonpursuit.com, click on the link at the top that says Barrel Club, and there's all the information on there because when you join that and you join Patreon, you help support the podcast. You support everything we do of getting, uh, as Clayton said earlier, great distillers on and, and sharing the knowledge of the brands that you love to hear uh, and also some other kind of potpourri of stuff where just Ryan, I and Fred, and we just kind of like ramble on about random subjects, but it's fun. So that's what we do best. Yeah, I know, but definitely thank you to everybody that does support us. So if you want to find out more, go and check that out. And also of course, follow us on all the socials. Uh, and then of course, since we have somebody on here that is, uh, has their own brand as well, Clayton, I want you to give you know, an, just an opportunity to kind of give a shout out of like where people can find out more about you, more about your distillery as well. Hey, thanks. Um, yeah, so Devil's Creek Distillery. Uh, you can find us at devilscreekdistillery.com. We're Instagram and Facebook at Devil's Creek Distillery. So All right, check the us name, out. The name Devil's Creek. Yes. Okay, there's got to be a story, right? Like, it, <laughs> right. it wasn't just like, oh, like we just rolled a pair of dice and it just rolled on Devil's so, Creek. Like, okay, come on. So, so in interestingly, we, um, my my mother is an author and she wrote a book about a fictional we we live in a in a like tourist ski town uh area so um she wrote a uh a, a book about a fictional ski area called devil's creek uh probably about 10 years ago and um uh, so we that was actually an amalgamation of devil's post pile which is a national national monument out here and then uh, mammoth creek here so that uh we in our search for names when we started on this we kind of like we ran through a bunch of things and then latched onto that. So I like it. it. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. uh... Well, now what you got to do is you got to start digging a trench. You got to put, you got to put a garden hose in there and you got to be like, this is, this is devil's Creek right here. Like <laughs> right. It runs right through the distillery. Yeah, right. Creek is right <laughs> over there. <laughs> we, we actually we get all our, our water. Yeah. We, we source all of our water from devil's Creek. Uh, it's a hose that comes out of my, my basement. No, it's a, uh, but no, honestly, Clayton, thank you so much for joining us. Scott, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure to have people that love the podcast and help support us and be able to join us on, on stuff like this too. So thank you all for, for supporting yeah. us and being here too. Yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. You yeah. Thanks. It. What a great opportunity guys. Really appreciate it. Had fun. Oh yeah. It's awesome. Great. But like I said, thank you all once again. This is a uh, finally, this is our final barrel selection for the week. So it's number three for this week. I what believe we we're pays for this year. Uh, I actually talked to Shem earlier. I had actually tasted some other barrel samples. There's another distillery out in California called, um, something in cook uh he'll probably put it in the comments and i tasted it and i was like you know we get barrel samples all the time and usually i'm just like these are not going to be good but i tasted it and i was like these are good but they're not great like there's something that there was just something that's just like needs to get it over the edge and he had mentioned that it was actually from the people that had started prisoner wine and they're doing all these kind of barrel finishes and i was like well maybe if we I take like some of that whiskey wine. And put it in prison or wine. Oh, you got savage and cooks. Thank, thank you, Shem. If we put it in a wine barrel, and they've got a few different wine barrel finishes, like we might be able to put this into something that, like, we look at as like, okay, like we'll put our stamp of approval on. So, Ryan, I have those samples for you, and you can come and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get them in your hands, and you can try them, and then we'll figure out what's on for round two. But bring them to um, the carpet. Yeah. Uh, Paul Clark says 60 picks for 2021. I, it that's feels a, like that's, that. It, it feels like we're on track, but you know, I, I want to, I want to aim for 40. I want to keep the bar low. If we, if we hit over that, then, then, you know, we all uh, thinks it's uh 365 Cause she's like, every night you have a barrel pick. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it's not every night. But. It feels like if it's 60 days out of the year, I mean, come on, think about it. Like that's, it feels like a lot, right? Yeah. It's, but it, Hey, I don't mind. I love drinking. Hang out with my feet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say there's, there's worse things to, to worry about. Yeah. But thank you everybody that tuned in and we are going to take next week off. I don't think we have any barrel selections next week. However, the week after that, Ryan and I will be actually going in person to Lux Row. We'll be selecting six barrels. Uh, we'll be doing three of the, oh, oh gosh, now I, I'm just, I'm blanking all of a sudden of what they are. We're doing, oh, okay. We're doing three Ezra Brooks barrel proofs and three, I believe, Rebel Yell barrel proofs. So we've got six barrels coming there. And then we have, uh, and we have lunch at Mammy's. We have lunch at Mammy's. That's of course. And the night after that, we have a Knob Creek rye selection. And the night after that, we have a Knob Creek bourbon selection. So we'll be selecting. My wife's uh, gonna love me that week. Yeah. So we'll be selecting <laughs> eight barrels here uh, in two weeks. So we've got a lot of barrels that are coming. It it doesn't stop. So we're we're just gonna we're just gonna keep it rolling. So. With that, I'll go ahead and uh, do the sign off. But thank you again for everybody that tuned in and we'll see you all soon. Cheers. Toodles. Cheers.